spooks late season, but it'd be. They don't spook on vehicles like they do people. It's true. And I think we just need to be careful because he's bedded behind, he shed behind that pond last year. It's January 1st, 2023. Happy New Year to everyone. Ryan and I are out at my little farm. Uh, it's 28 acres. We've hunted here a couple times this year. It's a little warm today. It's like 42 degrees. We've got a east wind at three miles per hour, so not much wind at all. It's gonna switch a little bit northeast. Excited to have Bella have some success last night on the river bottom. Uh, on the old 6x6, got out, took some photos this morning, really enjoyed her success, and uh, we don't have the right wind to get back in there and hunt Kelsey. It'll be good to give it a little break anyway, so decided to come around to this piece of property. Primary buck I'm in here after is a buck we call Rocky. It's a deer we had a couple encounters with last year, passed him a couple of times. And he is just a beautiful deer. Um, he's not been as active on the farm this year. But we've gotten pictures of him twice um, this late season. And then we actually got pictures of him last night on this food plot at like 5.15, right at the end of the legal shooting. So he is a great buck. He broke off the, um, the top half of his left G2, but otherwise he's still intact and just great mass, big frame, just, just an awesome deer. And to get him on a, a 28 acre parcel would be pretty cool. I've got an archery tag and my late muzzleloader tag. So I actually brought uh, both weapons, the bow and the muzzleloader, donning the orange. Hopefully um, he makes it into the food plot and I can get a shot at him with a bow. This setup really sets up well for a bow, particularly if they come into the plot, since the plot's not very big. But a lot of deer will skirt, just walk the timber edge. And if he's doing that, heading out to the cut ag, you know, it's about 100 yards, 120 yards. So I've got the muzzleloader. Looking forward to the sit. It's, we don't have great conditions the rest of the late season, so we're dealing with what we're gonna have the rest of the week. And um, you know, the deer are still moving. Um, they've definitely shifted their mindset to feeding. And so uh, they're moving a little later. It's that last 30 minutes basically, but um, you know, at least they're on their feet in daylight. So fingers crossed he shows up tonight or one or some other surprise deer. Last time we hunted here, we filmed that great four-year-old buck and we asked for help naming him. We've never come back to this property. Uh, but after looking through all the comments, and since this buck is named Rocky, I, I really latched on to one of the suggestions of uh, Drago. So uh, we're gonna call that deer Drago. I appreciate all the suggestions. I have uh, more and more trouble naming deer these days, but uh, we're gonna send some Midwest Whitetail apparel to the viewer who made that suggestion. We're gonna get quiet, we got a few hours to go, and hopefully Rocky shows up. Thank you. 
Rocky was a no-show, uh, very high anticipation hunt, uh, being that he was here last night in the last five minutes. Um, man, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Movement was pretty late as expected. I think we saw our first deer right around 4.36, which was, you know, maybe 35 minutes left to go. Ended up seeing, I think it was like eight or nine deer. Um, no, no good bucks, just small bucks does and fawns. So. Fun sit nonetheless. Uh, we're gonna get packed up, get out of here, and regroup. I need to think about where we wanna go tomorrow, whether or not we wanna come here, try to make a move on Kelsey.